Hey everybody, welcome back around to the Blog and Grill. I am your host, Doug, here with your video blog for July 14th, 2014. I have a great blog planned for you today. We're going to talk some quick hits as we go NASCAR and NFL training camp. I'm going to give you my Yankee update at the halfway mark. We're going to look at NBA free agency, but first off, I want to get to the FIFA World Cup final. Of course, this is Doug Sports Blog and Grill here live on YouTube and also on sportsmindednews.com. So let's get right into the FIFA World Cup. Yesterday, Germany wins its fifth World Cup. They win 1-0. to zero. I believe it was their fourth World Cup. They win 1-0. to zero. Mario Gozzi comes in and scores in the 113th minute, and it was a thrilling game. Good defense played on both sides. The goalie for Germany played very well, had some tough corner kicks early on that he got rid of. And really the two questions we're going to have to answer is what does it mean for Messi's legacy and what is it going to mean for the German national team down the line from here. And first getting to Messi, I think it's going to come, I don't think it's going to tarnish Messi's um, reputation at all. This guy is a legitimate baller in the football community, in the soccer community. And Lionel Messi is going to be a legend. He is still going to have a shot to win a World Cup probably in 2018. And really Lionel Messi is on a decent Argentinian team and really elevated this Argentina team to a level that we've never seen this team elevated to since Diano Maradona was on this team back in the 90s. So it's not going to hurt Messi's legacy. It's kind of like when we talk about Peyton Manning, if his legacy is going to be hurt because he can't win in the playoffs, it's not going to be hurt. Messi's still a great player, could be the best player in the world at this point. And the other question is, what's it going to mean for Germany down the stretch? Germany could be a team to reckon with, and reckon with at the 2018 World Cup, but I don't see him really going much further than that. It's kind of a middle-aged team right now who's going to get old pretty quick here. I think Germany's going to be a legitimate contender in 2018. In 2022, we could see another instance where they fall off the face of the earth like we saw the Spanish national team do in this past World Cup. Overall, the World Cup was great, got good ratings. Um, could really spark soccer in the U.S., but we're going to see what happens, and we are not going to be talking a lot of soccer, but the World Cup will be here again in 2018 before we know it. Let's get to some NBA free agency. Carmelo Anthony, the big news yesterday, re-signs with the Knicks a five-year between 122 and the max of $129 million. It's a good contract for Melo for sure. Outlook for the Knicks next year, I think this team is a legitimate playoff contender. I think they could be a 6 or a 7 seed in the East. I like the bring-in of Jose Calderon. I like the bring-in bring in of some of these other shooters. Clay Anthony Early has looked good in Summer League, if you can take Summer League for anything. I like Tim Hardaway Jr. I think Stoudemire is going to play well. And if they can get rid of Barniani somehow, it's going to free up some cap space. And looking down the line, this team's going to have cap room after next year and can really go after some big time free agents if they so choose and I think it's going to be good for the Knicks it's a strong outlook for the Knicks and Melo is going to be playing into his 30s at this point but still has probably three good years left in him another team that made some moves yesterday with the Miami Heat I agree with one of the I agree with two of the moves but don't like one of them they signed the wall dang to a two-year 20 million dollar deal I like the signing of dang I think he's a good role player, decent, almost a little bit above a role player. He can be a serviceable guy for the Heat on defense and offense for sure. He's going to go along well with Wade and Bosch. They re-signed Mario Chalmers, which I didn't like, but I think they had to do it at this point. This is the one move I didn't like they do, that they did. I think Chalmers is an overrated point guard, and that's really going to be shown this year without LeBron there being able to handle the ball as much, and Dwayne Wade maybe having, having to handle it more. They have, they're going to have Shabazz Napier coming in off the bench and still Norris Cole. And they also went out and re-signed Chris the Birdman Anderson. I like this signing. He is a hard-nosed, gritty player. He plays well with Udonis Haslam. And he's going to have to play well with Chris Bosh, and we'll see how he does with Josh McRoberts as well. I like what they did here. Don't like the Chalmers signing. But the Heat are still going to be a team that's going to win between 44 and 46 games this next season. Shake-up in Dallas, Chandler Parsons heads to the Mavs. This is a big signing for the Mavs. I think Chandler Parsons is an underrated player. He's a great shooter. can get to the shot. I like the signing. He signs for three years and $45 million. And we're seeing Dallas make some moves. They brought in Tyson Chandler. They re-signed Dirk Nowitzki. Now they go after Chandler Parsons. We'll see what they can do if they can find an answer at the point guard position. 
Maybe Raymond Felton comes into camp ready to go. Maybe he doesn't. They get to find an answer there. But I like Chandler Parsons going to the Mavs, and this the Mavs are reloading to try to make another run at the San Antonio Spurs in the West. Time for MLB at the All-Star break. We're going to have a little two-part session on Major League Baseball over the next couple of days. Today we're going to look at the Yankees and then in the Home Run Derby. And then Wednesday we will take a look inside kind of what's been going on with um, standings. And we're going to talk about that stuff too, okay? So first let's get to the... New York Yankees. Yankees finish off a decent first half, okay? Yankees finish off their first half right around 500, playing some decent baseball. Um, we have a lot of underperforming stars, and the injuries, the injuries have been the biggest deal for the Yankees. They've lost four of five pitchers. Carlos Beltran's been nicked up. Um, and right now, if you look at it, the Yankees have to feel like they have some success at this point, okay? Yankees, stars are underperforming. Carlos Beltran's only hitting down around 200. Um, just not a very solid team at this point. Mark Deshera's been playing very well. Brett Gardner had a very good first half. Brian Roberts showed up big for the Yankees. And the big story has been Derek Jeter. And Derek Jeter, through his first half, 272 batting average, very good for him. 92 hits, 2 homers, 25 RBIs. If the Yankees need to go out and make a move, they need to go out and find some starting pitching, okay? And there's not a lot of starting pitching out there. I don't think they're going to be able to swing anything for... Um, they're really not going to be able to swing a deal for David Price. Jason Hamill, Jeff Samarja already traded. They already went out and got Brandon McCarthy. They might have to go out and get one more pitcher. But best case scenario, Masahiro Tanaka's elbow heals, and they get Michael Pineda back, and they get back 40% of that starting rotation, or half the guys that they have missed so far in this first half. All right, now let's talk a little bit about where they're going to finish. I think the Yankees' best chance to get in the playoffs, they're going to have to go out and win this division. And they can win this division. They're just five games back. They play 40 of the final 68 games at home, but they haven't played great at home. I think that's going to improve. And they also finish up with 20 straight league games. So we'll see what they can do with that. All right, also we got the home run derby tonight. Time for me to give you my pick for this. I think the semifinalists will be um, the two guys that get locked in. So I am going to take in in the American League, I'm going to take Batista and Cespedes to get to the final in the American League. And in the National League, I'm going to take Tulowitzki. And I'm going to take Giancarlo Stanton. And my winner out of the American League, I'm going to take Ioana Cespedes. And I'm going to take Cespedes going up against Giancarlo Stanton. And I'm going to take Giancarlo Stanton to take down Joanna Cespedes in the finals. All right. Wednesday, I'm going to be back. We're going to go around the division, look at division leaders and the wild cards and who will make the playoffs. So that's going to be a lot of fun on Wednesday. A lot, of get, lot to get to today. Now we're going to hit up some NASCAR briefly. NASCAR yesterday, Jeff Gordon ran out of gas late. He finishes 26th. And... Brad Keselowski picks up his third one of the year and really solidifies himself as a legitimate possible number one seed for the cup chase. Okay, He is now the points leader with the wins. Jeff Gordon still has the most points. Seven races till the chase, and right around that bubble spot, we got Austin Dillon on the outside looking in, Greg Biffle, Casey Kane, Tony Stewart, um, and all these guys just need to get a win, and they will be in. Guys still without a win in the top 16, Kenseth, Newman, Boyer, Menard, and Kyle Larson. If I had to pick one guy to be in and one guy to be out going down the stretch, I'm going to pick Tony Stewart to be in and Paul Menard to fall out of the top 16. NFL training camp set to open up next week. Just to give you some notables briefly, Buffalo Bills will be the first camp to open. That's going to be on Sunday, July 20th. My Cincinnati Bengals will open up camp on Thursday, July 24th along with the New York Jets and just down the street from me in Cortland, New York. I will definitely get out there for probably a day to check stuff out there. New York Giants will be opening up camp on Tuesday, July 22nd. And I just want you to send me your favorite team and other teams you want me to cover throughout the training camp season. I'm going to be giving training camp reports every day on the blog. 
Just let me know what team you want to know about, for sure. That's all I got for today. Wednesday, I'm going to be back. I'm going to grade the MLB All-Star Game and the Home Run Derby. Also, let you know who will make the playoffs. We'll talk British Open from Royal Liverpool as that'll tee off on Thursday with Tiger Woods, his second event back from his back injury. We'll do some winners and losers from NBA Free Agency and NFL Training Camp. Who do you want to know about? Let me know, and I will cover them live here on the blog. Always remember to check me out on sportsmindednews.com. Now, my man James Williams. You can follow him on Twitter at JHW Reporter. Also, follow me on Twitter at YankeeBaller415. You can comment, question, subscribe to my page on YouTube. Thanks for tuning into the Blog and Grill. I'll be back on Wednesday. Have a good start to the week.